Hello, welcome to another episode of Arrange Your Own Marriage. Um, in today's episode, we're going to talk about how to identify your type. Now, this is a super important episode because if there is anything that you can take away from the whole course, it would be understanding who you are in a relationship and what that means in terms of what kind of a relationship you should expect to build with your potential partner. Okay, so I want you to pay attention really carefully. So let's start right in the beginning. I just want to start by saying that love and marriage are two different things. And very often we get confused between the two. Now, I don't want to go into too much detail about what each of this is. But broadly, I'm going to say that love is what you feel for somebody or something. Um, and it's a feeling. Whereas marriage is an institution that tries to lock love down or lay boundaries around love but that's not the only thing that marriage does marriage also enables two people to come together and build a relationship together that may seem largely transactional but over time uh, people do grow affectionate um, towards each other and uh, you know there are lots of kind of benefits of this transaction that's carried out at one point of time so what happens when you fall in love? You don't look at somebody and say, oh, that guy's got a great CV. You know, I absolutely love him. Or, you know, oh my God, that girl's got really gorgeous hair and I absolutely love her. It doesn't work that way. You just look at somebody and, you know, it's love at first sight or love at, you know, millionth sight. Uh, but there's something that happens, which is hard to explain, but it it, it, it kindles a sort of emotion in you. It's a, it's a sort of bodily feeling that you feel within your body and it's a physical feeling that you actually feel within um, that, that makes you feel wonderful, right? It's that instinctive reaction that you have to a certain experience. So I'd like you to actually think back to all the times that you've actually been in love, uh, felt attracted super attracted to somebody at first sight or, or or felt that feeling inside of you right so think back to all the all those times and think now in retrospect think back as to what you found attractive about them what what kindled that feeling in you was it was it the way they looked or was it the way they dressed was it the way they spoke what was it can you can you put a finger on what you found attractive about people Make a list of all the things that you found attractive about people in the past. It could be past girlfriends, past crushes, just really anyone that you felt attracted to, right? Once you have a list of all the things, all the, all the qualities that you found attractive in several people in the past, you will be able to recognize um, what are visual cues or, or emotional cues for you that, that kindles a sort of connection or that emotion uh, inside of you that makes you feel like going for it for the lack of a better word like feel like going for it so uh, think about think about all those um, attributes and register it because the next time you meet somebody who kindles a similar emotion you will know what it is that you find attractive about that person because you already have like a list of things that you know that you find attractive about people in general doesn't mean you're going to like not find a new thing attractive but like just you know now once you have this uh, list of visual emotional cues listed uh, put that aside okay sit down and think about who you are as a person okay and what I mean to say is um, think about all the adjectives that you would use to describe yourself right uh, make a long laundry list of all adjectives that you would use to describe yourself things that other people tell you things that only you know everything make a large laundry list of adjectives for yourself once you've made that um, start putting them in like concentric circles right at the center start with five adjectives that you would use to describe yourself on your own like it's something that you know best about yourself and that is something that you feel very strongly about yourself and does not require any sort of external validation um, to confirm that that's who you are, right? List them down. 
then in the next circle put all the things maybe like two or three things uh two or three adjectives that your family would use to describe you then put a circle around it and list two or three adjectives that your friends would use to describe you and then you know make a co-worker circle or something like that right so <clears throat> list all of your attributes in concentric circles in the order of closeness uh from you and once you have that take a hard look at it ask yourself if if that piece of paper represents who you are i mean there are other parts of you but i'm just saying like at the core of it is that who you are keep reiterating till you have something that you're super happy with um and then take that piece of paper stick it up on your wall look at it every day and every time you feel like something needs to be moved from one place to another like you know you have a part of your personality that's been developed let's say because of your family and you know uh, inherently you're not that person but you are that person because your family expects you to be that way move things around here and there if something's not clear it's on the fence you don't know if this is inherent or you got it because of friends put it on the boundary right um just make sure at the end of a week you have a visualization of who you are right to an extent that's as accurate as possible after this um i want you to look at the inner more circle uh, that you've used to describe yourself on your own look at all the adjectives that you've used and ask yourself for a person who is described with these adjectives what sort of a relationship is super comforting and nurturing and positive for this person right if you say at the core of who you are you are somebody um who likes to talk a lot and who would like other people to listen to your stories then you want a relationship where you can chat and where you can have a conversation with the other person right if you identify that you're somebody who is really insecure you want a relationship which is devoid of judgment right so that way develop a list of characteristics of a relationship that would be super nurturing for who you have identified you are so obviously it involves a lot of thinking and it's not easy to do it takes a bit of time i would say it would take you at least a week of you know thinking about it every day and you will come up with a list of things that you want from a relationship right so i would suggest that make sure this list is not longer than four or five points because um otherwise you won't be able to sort of focus uh, on what's most important to you so you want to make sure that this is a highly prioritized list of five things um uh, that you seek in a relationship remember that this has nothing to do with a partner this is what you want from the relationship the the equation between the two of you okay um for instance um when you write down you don't you don't want to write down saying i want someone who doesn't judge you want to say the relationship should allow people to be themselves both of us should not judge each other and that's that's the relationship right so you're not you're not talking about something that's completely external to you you have some power you have some skin in the game when you define what you want involving yourself in the relationship once you have this list of things that you want from a relationship you can then start to think about what kind of people will bring these values like for example um you know um if you're looking for somebody who is really talkative and who would chat and you know enjoy conversation conversations you will then you know go look at partners who are let's say extroverts or or good converse, conversationalists even if they're introverts like you know after some time you know once they open up to you etc if these are people who enjoy talking about certain specific topics um, and will do so you know um with you and you guys have a great equation th- those are the kind of people that you know you want to be with so identify what you're looking for and see who is most likely to bring that value and then say okay you know if you want a relationship where you can talk to each other constantly all the time uh looking for an extrovert might make sense 
this is just an example this is just a very basic example but depending on what your particular requirements are from a relationship it will help you translate that into the type of person you that that you will find interesting so once you've done this exercise you somewhat uh, come up with a list of what your type is now look at what you find attractive in a partner from the very first exercise we did saying uh, think about all the things that you found attractive in the past um, and look at what you've got in this list so this is a rational list that you've completely thought through um, and this is a list that is very very instinctive emotional driven by feelings and so on look at both these lists this is both you right uh, one might feel superficial but that is still you and the reason why it feels superficial is because it it doesn't involve a lot of thought and it's not deeply thought about and it's very instinctive um and 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 that's why it somehow feels wrong to want it but remember that this is both you these are both the things that you want and there's nothing wrong with it now the moment you are able to accept this believe me you will start to make progress in your life right now look at these two lists and say okay great these are all the things that i find attractive in someone and this is all the things that i would desire in a, a in a potential partner uh and i want both of these things now it's wonderful to be able to want everything in the world but remember uh that you're not going to get everything in the world at best you will probably end up getting two or three things that you want from a partner and that's great enough so from here what do you do you pick five things that you want from a partner including things that you find attractive so put these lists put together pick out only five things you're allowed to pick things that you feel instinctively and things that you've thought about but pick five things totally right once you've picked five things totally now you need to assign yourself a cutoff score okay you have five characteristics when i get 3 out of 5 i'll be happy or when i get 4 out of 5 i'll be happy assign a cutoff you need a cutoff you're never going to get all five if you do fabulous okay you're super lucky but going out there hoping to get all five is only going to set you up to disappointment and you don't want to do that so say you know you have a cut off of 80% you want four characteristics out of five that you've listed in a potential partner now make sure these are the top four things that you want from a partner just so that you're not leaving off any important stuff okay now look at this list this is kind of what your type is right um it may not look exactly like what you had in mind before you saw this video but remember that this is this is kind of your type after having worked on it for a couple of weeks and thought about it this is sort of your type now you can work on this list over time if anything changes but remember you can only replace things on this list but you cannot make this list longer than five qualities or five attributes now if you set yourself that kind of a target uh, you will stay focused on what you truly want the reason why it's important to figure out what your type is or or know that before you go out there in the market is because a lot of these dating apps or matrimonial apps require you to set filters or preferences um uh, in terms of what you're looking for in a partner uh so you want to be crystal clear so that you are not constantly sort of swayed by what is being shown on the platform because it's very tempting uh to let's say for example you're looking for somebody from the same city as you are if you don't find somebody for a week it's very tempting to open it up to two more cities and say oh okay you know i'm okay with two more cities whereas in the first place you could have known that you're still open to two more cities and possibly met more people in that one week for instance right so i'm saying it's very important for you to be clear about what you want so that you're not wasting your time on these platforms because at the end of the day it's excruciatingly painful to to be on any of these platforms putting yourself out there to to find yourself a partner in the marriage market so the more clear you are the less the time that you spend on these platforms and the happier you are in life in general 
want to talk about how to set your uh, filters and preferences on your matrimonial uh, uh, profile. So the way to do this is, first of all, go out there, uh, put all the preferences that you have. If there are like five things that you want uh, from a potential partner or 10 things that you want from a potential partner, put it out there. Okay. And then see how many matches, how many potential matches it gives you. If it's saying zero <laughs> or or ten, for instance, um, you will you will know that in the ideal scenario, who is out there for you, right? Um, now, it is always discouraging when you say that when you see that there are ten people, and when you actually look at those ten people, they look nothing like what you want, right? Um, I just want to say that these products don't necessarily work well. People wouldn't necessarily have the, have their forms filled correctly uh, maybe it's an issue of discovery or like something like that because of which you will not always find the perfect candidates when you set up all your filters and you set yourself up for disappointment when you put your filters uh, too narrow when your filters are too narrow so what I would suggest is always start wide make sure that your upper funnel is as wide as possible uh, if there are some things that are super important to you. Make sure that you have only those ticked or those filters turned on. The rest, keep it open. Keep it open so that you can evaluate them later over time as you, let's say, speak to the person or text them or whatever. But don't start super narrow because it's only going to set you up uh, to disappointment. Okay. Once you have your filters set up, what you want to do is uh, make sure that you have strict like contact filters on your profile so that you don't have people who don't suit your requirements reaching out to you because what it does is it's it's noise and it just makes you feel a bit disappointed that someone who you absolutely don't like is reaching out to you and sending your requests. It's kind of like like you know having a creep on the road staring at you when you don't want them to be doing that, right? So make sure that they all go into the filtered fol folder. And you know you never have to see that so make sure your contact filters are super tight because that helps you have a better experience on the platform and also make sure that you turn off all sorts of alerts hide your phone numbers email IDs etc if you don't want to be directly contacted by someone who finds your profile interesting whereas you may not find their profile remotely relevant right and these are all like some basic hygiene uh, that you you will have to follow on these platforms to make sure you have a marginally better experience um, apart from this what I'm going to do is I'm also um, uh, going to going to share with you uh, some some sort of um, uh, practices like good practices uh, in terms of how often you should log in to uh, the platform to check uh, you know if you've received interest or you know if you should send requests and so on uh, in the in the coming episodes uh, this should help set a sort of rhythm to your to your entire search journey uh, so that you don't feel too jaded but at the same time you're active enough to actually get the best out of the market so i hope this was helpful uh, good luck happy spouse hunting <laughs>